So I'm now going to move to the second part of the Cochrane KT framework. One part was the target audiences. We're focused on one of the four policymakers. The other part of the Cochrane KT framework are the themes. You'll see a sixth theme in the middle, effective and sustainable KT, uh, which of course is about how Cochrane as an entity can support that. I'm going to start in the top right corner, prioritization and co-production, and then work through the five briefly. So the first one, prioritization and co-production. If I had to pick a single one for making policy, uh, for making systematic reviews policy relevant, this would be the one. <clears throat> so this means, in plain language, producing syntheses that meet the needs of policymakers. And I'll take the two parts of this uh, separately. So first, prioritization. Ideally, what we want are systematic and transparent processes for eliciting the short, medium, and long-term priorities of policymakers. So let's say, for example, ones that can be addressed in six to uh, 12 weeks by an evidence brief, and then the, po the policy dialogue that it's, it informs, or say six to 12 months for a full systematic review. People should correct me if I'm wrong, um, at least in the space that I know, the only tool that is available, it's not yet published, it'll be coming out soon, which was developed by colleagues at the American University of Beirut, is the Spark tool for prioritizing review questions. It's in the particular domain of health policy and systems research, but with very minor modifications, it would be more generally relevant. Um, so that would be an example of a systematic and transparent uh, process. Um, if we now move to involving policymakers in all stages of the evidence synthesis process, some people call this integrated knowledge translation. The idea that as you undertake um, an evidence synthesis, you should be working with the ultimate users of it to help to articulate the question, to design the approach, to getting feedback on a draft, and then to figuring out how to support the use of the systematic review when it's done. So a concrete example would be in the AVIPNET group, uh, evidence-informed policy networks, most of them in preparing an evidence brief would convene a steering committee that would include policymakers. They would conduct up to 20 key informant interviews on the terms of reference for the evidence brief to make sure the problem is framed appropriately, the options are appropriate to the setting before they begin searching for evidence. They would also engage policymakers as reviewers for the draft evidence brief, and later, something that'll come to again, the policy dialogue. They would engage them as dialogue participants where the evidence brief is considered alongside other factors. So that would be a particular example of a very thorough process of engaging policymakers in the synthesis process itself. So I'm now gonna go to poll five, and my question here is, how many evidence syntheses have you been have you been involved in where you've meaningfully involved at least one policymaker in its development? So I'll leave it to you to define meaningfully involved, but how many syntheses have you meaningfully involved policymakers in? So we'll just give folks a few minutes. 50% voted so far. Some of you on the call, like Sandy, are experts in this type of thing, so I'm sure the number for some of you will be more than 10. Okay, so we're at 80% voted, 50% of you said none, 20% um, of you said one to two, 20% three to five, around 6%, six to 10, and then 8% more than 10. So again, we have a, a diversity. Some of you might be answering no because you haven't been involved in, in systematic reviews to date, uh, whereas others might have been involved but not meaningfully involved policymakers. So it's challenging, no question. It can add time to the work, but my sense is it has a dramatic impact on the relevance of the ultimate synthesis. So now if we work, we're now moving around the circle of the Cochrane KT framework. If we now talk about packaging, push, and support to implementation, another way to say this would be ensuring policymakers receive and can act on evidence syntheses. Uh, two examples that I've, I'm giving here, one is preparing policymaker targeted summaries of systematic reviews that profile policy relevant information. Um, so uh, systematic reviews or evidence syntheses in general contain tons of information. Policy folks don't care about a lot of that content. They often are looking for very particular things. And uh, groups like Cochrane Australia that profile that policy relevant information in a short summary of the evidence synthesis 
find that that is very helpful uh, for policymakers. Another example would be preparing evidence briefs on priority policy issues. So that would be another example of packaging the evidence, in this case, multiple systematic reviews, as well as single studies and local data about a problem options implementation. So a very different approach to packaging. Cochrane Australia packaging a single review and highlighting policy relevant information. The evidence brief profiling all the policy relevant information about a problem options and implementation. Second example, I'd give here is designing and implementing proactive knowledge translation plans that address five questions. But you'll see between the two uh, M dashes, particularly when policy windows open. So one thing that's very important in the policy world is you might have an evidence synthesis that at the moment uh, is not on something that would be relevant to policymakers, but something changes and suddenly the issue rises to the agenda. And the question is, is are you prepared to now bring the review to people's attention? It might be six months old, it might be a year old, but now's the opportunity. So an example would be in a high income country like Canada, right now, big focus on deaths re related to opioid use. Uh, reviews related to that topic six or 12 months ago might have gotten very little policy attention. Now the policy window is open and policymakers are clamoring uh, for evidence syntheses about how to deal with the opioid crisis. So the policy relevance shifts and uh, opportunity to make an impact is to recognize that shift and bring the synthesis to attention. And for us, these five questions are, are very helpful. What's the message for the policymaker? They don't care about the details of the review very often. What's the take home message? To whom should it be directed? Is this to the chief medical officer of health? Is this to someone in cabinet office? Is this to the political advisor to the minister? By whom should it be delivered? Sometimes we as researchers, those of us, those of you on the line who are researchers are not the best intermediary. We can often find uh, advocates in the community who if we can arm them with the best evidence are much better positioned to bring it to the attention of policymakers. How should it be delivered? could be a personalized face-to-face -face briefing. Uh, it could be other mechanisms, but certainly that face-to-face -face contact seems to be very helpful. And with what goal should it be delivered? Is this to help someone understand and better frame a problem? Is this to convince them to make a choice about one option over another? It's very important to be clear about what the goal is that's being uh, sought. So now if I move to poll six, um, please indicate the number of, uh, of evidence syntheses for which you've prepared a policymaker targeted summary. So even if you've never been involved in evidence synthesis production before, have you ever written a summary of an evidence synthesis that was targeted at policymakers? So I'll just give a, a few seconds for people to vote. So we're at 50% now. So I'll just wait till it gets a bit closer to 80. Okay, so we're now at 80% voted. Um, so about one third of you said none, about one third of you said one to two, and then from there it was 11%, uh, 11%, 6%. So some of you very active in this space, uh, others about a third of you haven't yet had the opportunity to do this. So thank you for the poll for poll six. Now on to facilitating poll. So another way of saying this is growing policymakers' capacity to find and use relevant evidence syntheses. So here, one of the things that we can do are promote one-stop shops for pre-appraised evidence syntheses that highlight policy relevant information, provide links, sorry, I'm missing the word too, provide links to policymaker targeted summaries and offer free monthly evidence services. So I've given you three examples in the health space. So in the health space, access for clinical questions, health evidence for public health evidence, and then we have a database called Health Systems Evidence that functions in five languages about how we organize ourselves to get the right program services and drugs to those who need them. And in mid-September, uh, we'll be launching social systems evidence to cover many program and service areas, related system arrangements and implementation strategies. You'll see the long list of areas that we consider to be within the social system space. So education, uh, infrastructure, recreation, transportation, and so on. 
So these types of uh, shops are very helpful for policymakers. The evidence syntheses have already been appraised. The policy relevant information is being flagged. They can link out to a summary and they can sign up to receive any newly added evidence syntheses that are added to the database uh, each month. So now if I continue with facilitating polls, some other things that are that I feel fall into this category are administering the rapid response service. I've talked about this before for us uh, in our space. This was an innovation that started in Uganda and then spread. Um, and then another example would be building capacity among policymakers to find and use policy relevant uh, evidence syntheses as part of their policy analysis work. So an example here that I'm familiar with would be the University of Johannesburg's building capacity to use research evidence uh, that's now called the Africa Center for Evidence that has focused on building capacity among policymakers to find and use evidence syntheses, which is hugely helpful uh, in terms of supporting the use of those syntheses. So finally, if we move on to the last of the groups, exchange, uh, another way of saying this is engaging with policymakers to support their use of policy relevant evidence syntheses. So I've foreshadowed this a few times with my talk of evidence briefs because these lead into policy dialogues where policy challenges can be discussed with those who will be involved in or affected by decisions. And I think there's three things that are very important uh, for me with policy dialogues. The term is used by many people to mean different things. For people like Avipnet Brazil, I think Jorge Barreto is on the line. What it means for people like him are that it's informed by a context specific summary of what's known about a problem options implementation. And then the third bullet, that the de deliberations are facilitated in a way that draws out the tacit knowledge and real world views, sorry, I have a typo, and experiences about the full range of factors that will influence decision making. So those three eyes that I talked about before, institutions, interests and ideas, and about next steps for different constituencies. One uh, thing that we have found very helpful uh, here in Canada that we've now added to the process is to also allow these dialogues to draw on the systematically and transparently elicited values and preferences of citizens. So we increasingly uh, convene one to three citizen panels uh, before we finalize the evidence brief. So policymakers have the best available evidence, they have the, the values and preferences of citizens, and then they have the insights of the people in the room on the day that can inform next steps. So it allows all of the inputs, evidence, citizen values, and the political factors to all come into play to inform a discussion about next steps. Sorry, I forgot that I had one last uh, slide, improving climate building demand. Uh, this is about advocating for evidence-informed decision-making. I've given four examples here of the types of things that we see in countries that are particularly good at using evidence syntheses, strong messages from all levels, performance criteria, checklists so you can't get to the minister or to cabinet without documenting how you found and used evidence syntheses, uh, external audits that brings to attention shortfalls in their use of evidence syntheses, and then finally, actually there are five journalists who highlight when government statements aren't supported by evidence synthesis and syntheses. And we had an excellent example of that for many years here in Canada with a, an online, uh, online um, uh, article called Science-ish, which was part of our national news magazine. 